Hey there, and welcome to another screencast from the Coding Pad. This is Mary. And in today's screencast, I'm going to show you how to install Modex CMS on your local host. Now, in the last couple of screencasts, I've been kind of going through a beginner's corner series where we talked about how to create a local development environment and how to set up databases and users. And in the last screencast, um, we walked through how to install some scripts and we looked specifically at WordPress and Drupal and kind of ran, ran out of time, um, but I did want to go through how to install Modex CMS because a lot of the tutorials on this blog um, cover Modex CMS. And if you're completely new to Modex, um, if you go to the coding pad and click on beginner tutorials, and if you scroll down to the Modex beginner series, you'll see um, a series of tutorials that goes through from introduction to um, adding different components and, and different functionality um, that you can do with Modex. So today we're going to install Modex on our WAMP server. The first step, of course, is to always make sure that yeah, your WAMP server is running and ready to go. And I'm going to click and open my home page, and that's localhost. So the first thing I'm going to do is in my www folder, so that's WAMP, www. I'm going to create a folder for my new project. I'm going to call that Modex, okay? And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer the Modex files that I downloaded from the website. These files, I'm going to transfer them to my Modex project folder, okay? So as, that, as I leave that um, transferring, the next thing I need to do, of course, is to create a new um, project. And if I refresh this page, you can see now that my project shows up. What I meant to say is I need to create a new database and, a, and add my users to that database. But you can see that under my projects, Modex now shows up. So click PHP My Admin, and we're going to create a database to hold our Modex um, install. And I'm going through this really fast because I covered it in the other screencast. So if you're a little confused, go back to the coding pad and watch the screencast on um, creating projects, databases, and users. If you need to, go back all the way to the very first one, how to set up a local development environment. All right, so I'm going to create a new database, Modex. Set my collation as usual, like I did for the other um, scripts. So that's created. The next thing I need to do is to add my user to this database. So I have my user here, Mary, that I'm using for my CMSs, and I'm going to add privileges to the Modex um, database. And again, if all this is confusing to you, go back and watch my previous screencast, and it should become pretty clear. But I'm going to move these through these steps really fast. All right, so we're good to go. It's all set up. And if I go back here, yes, the files are done transferring. And of course, I just used um, the Windows folders to just move the files back and forth. But if I was working on a remote, um, server, I would of course use an FTP program like Fire FTP or um, Qt FTP or something like that. All right, so if I now go back to my projects and I click on Modex, it says it's not currently installed. Do you want to install it now? So I click on that. Choose language. I'm working with English, so that's fine. And because I don't have any other installation of Modex sitting in this folder, the default choice is a new installation. If I was upgrading, then that would be my choice. Right, so we click Next. So now here I need to enter my database login name. I'm using Mary as my um, user, and I'm going to enter my password. I believe it was that. And then I test the database server connection and view collation. All right, it passed. Collations are now available. If you get an error here, go back and check your login name and your password. Make sure that that user is actually assigned to the database that you're trying to, I mean, is actually present and um, you know, you've, you've entered the right name and the right password. So the next step now is to um, connect to the database. Now, Modex is able to create the database for you, but I prefer to create the database myself. I just find it so much cleaner and so much more just um, easier to do, uh, but it can't create that for you. So let me go back here to PHP My Admin and just remind myself the name of the database is simply Modex. So I'm going to go back here. That's Modex. That's fine. Table prefix is fine. I'm going to select uh, my connection method as set names. The correlation is already correctly selected. 
and then create or test selection. All right, so it was able to select the Modex database that I created. So it's passed, database selected. And the next step is to set up my default manager settings. And this is what I'll use to log into my manager. So admin is fine. And then I'm just going to enter, enter a random email address here. It doesn't really matter because I'm working locally and locally, and I'm not going to really um, be sending mail from this um, website. It's just a local setup. And again, I have to enter a password. So I'm just going to use the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's the password that I'll use to log into the back end of my Modex site. Default manager language will be English. All right. So, so far, everything looks good, successful. Um, now, here's where you get to choose whether you, you want to install a sample website. And what the sample website is, is simply um, a pre, pre-built pre Modex website. And it's, it's a great thing to do um, if you just want to see how Modex works on the inside, see how different components and snippets and plugins are used. This is a great idea. Um, but if you're like, if you if you're installing Modex so that you can build your own website, I would say leave this unchecked because this can be a little overwhelming, and if you're trying to overwrite things to create your own website, you can kind of drown in all of it. What I recommend is install for your website install Modex without the sample website, and then do a parallel install in another like demo folder and put the sample website. And so that you, you can see how the different things are done, how the different snippets are called, and it's a great way to learn. Now, for my purposes, I'm just going to completely ignore the sample website. And down here, you have chunks and modules and plugins and snippets that come with the default Modex install. I like to leave all these checked. I like to install all of them because then, um, you know, if, if I need to use them, they're there ready for me to use. I don't have to go back to the Modex website to download them again and upload them to my site. I just like to leave them all in there. And as time goes and you get more experience and you know exactly what you're building and exactly what you need, your installs will probably become more refined and more customized and you'll know what you want to live in and, and you know what you want to um, not install and all that stuff. So I'm going to leave those in and um, my sample website is unchecked. I don't want that. All right, good. So install. If all goes well, first it does a pre-install validation, checks to make sure that the PHP version of cor is correct, register globals is off, and all that other good stuff. If you get any red errors here, you want to go back and check um, what the problem is and, and see how to fix it. But everything looks good. And remember from um, a previous screencast when I was talking about installing WAMP server, you can have different versions of PHP running on your WAMP server install. Now, in this case, I have my PHP version set to 5.2.11 because I know that Modex CMS, as is right now, supports that version of um, PHP. With 5.3, I would probably get some errors. So for my purposes with Modex, um, I want to leave my PHP version set at 5.2.11. Right, so then agree to the terms and install. And if you're confused about that part of it, just go back and look at my screencast on how to install um, WAMP server. So agree to the Modex license, install, right? And we should get a report now that says um, the install was successful. Here are the results. And everything is OK. Everything is installed. We don't have any errors. And the last step is Modex requests to remove the install folder and files. That's a good security measure. So I say yes and close. And there we go. Modex is installed. Takes me to the manager backend where I need to log in with my credentials that I set. But if I just click on my Modex site here, which takes me to localhost Modex, you can see that the website, um, this is the default page that comes up when you install Modex without the sample website. And it looks like we had a successful install. Now to log into my manager, I just type manager here. And I'll enter my login credentials that I set when I was doing my install. So login. And there we go. We are now logged into the manager, the manager backend, and Modex is installed um, on our local host. And now we can play with it. We can learn how to use different things and different snippets and different plugins. And it's a pretty simple install, pretty straightforward. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask them. Um, you can leave comments at my blog, The Coding Pad, and I'll respond. And um, I hope that this screencast has been helpful, and I look forward to seeing you at the next screencast. And thanks for hanging there with me.